Welcome to another Pro to Pro. Thanks for joining us today. Our project is a custom oversized screen door. Tommy, you are working with a homeowner for Ask This Old House. Right, Laura from Dorchester. And she's got an old house, uh, so she's got a pretty big opening leaving the house out onto a porch. Yeah, the existing door that we're going to put the screen in front of is 42 by 92. 92. 92. So 42 is a lot wider than a typical 32, 34, 36 inch door. Right. 6'8". Six, 6'8", eight. Six, eight, right. So you are particularly concerned. I know you always are fastidious about this, but you are particularly <laughs> concerned to make sure that this door stays true and straight and doesn't rack or warp. Right. You have designed a couple things into this process. So let's talk about what we're going to actually build. Yep. The first thing you've done to help us make sure that this door stays straight and true is your actual design. Right. Well, the design is this is this material is much wider. The styles and the rails are much wider than a standard screen door that you would get off the shelf. Other than three to three and a half inches, these are five and a half inches. These are five and a half inches, and the bottom kick is eight, uh, seven and a half inches. The idea of that that gives me a lot of meat at the connection to lessen the chance of the door sagging or racking mm -hmm. over time. Yep. And so you've got one, two, three, four rails, right. more than typical. That's right. And lots of times you would see this rail here in the middle become an upright. So you'd have like an H, if you turn it sideways, an H. But because she has so many little kids, I worried about the kids pushing the screen out. So by putting this intermittent on here, that gives the kids something to push against yep. when they're going out. So it starts with a good design. That makes a lot of sense. You um, come up with this just awesome joint. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is, is totally Tommy Silva <laughs> over engineering right here. Walk us through this. So well, here's our, here's our uh, style, here's our rail. Yep. Okay, so this gives you an idea. And if you notice, we cut a rabbit in here. And we've also cut a rabbit in that joint right there. So I'm going to pull that really close so we can see that. So this piece sits on top of this piece, but it also butts against that piece. So now you could glue this up, and is it going to be strong enough? Mm. Mm. Over time, this could twist and whatever, and you don't really want it. So the ideal thing would be to put a mortise in here and allow it to come in halfway through, and that would lock that in nice and tight. So that's basically what I did. So if I pull this apart, I have two tenons that are in there, floating tenons. They'll sit in there. We'll, when we glue the door together, these aren't going to come out. And we'll glue all of this surface. So we have a lot of surface to glue. So this, uh, hang on a second. This is, you guys call this a half lap joint? This is a half lap. So right these here. two are going to sit on yep. top of each other like that. Yep. But in addition to that, we've yeah, got well, the floating If you tenons. think of a half lap joint it, as opposed to just something that, that sticks together like that, joint right is there. It, you've got glue surface here. All right, but with a half lap joint, I have a glue surface, glue surface, glue surface. Yeah, two, three times as much glue exactly. surface. Exactly, so we're gonna add even more power by gluing in here, gluing this in here, and then gluing them all together. So that's gonna end up going in like that. Right. So and now, the half lap. over time, when that door swings on a hinge, that's not going to settle down and sag over time. Right. And again, just it's sort of a nuance, but I'm not sure people understand this. These are the oversized floating tenons. Right. So when that is actually in this, it's going to be pretty deep into the material. Exactly. And that lessens the chance of this twisting. All right. So we've got a Tommy super engineered <laughs> joint right there. Upside down. Uh, there, oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> keep my That's why you're the captain. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we've got a good design. We've got a good joint. And then finally, um, thanks to our folks at Baird Lumber, we also are going to start with some really good material. Yeah, this is great. This is straight grain fur and this is S4S which means it's sanded on all four sides yep. and they did a nice job. This wood is really beautiful and it's nice and straight. Also oversized or I call it oversized. This, this is, is five not well it's five quarter material. This is five quarter by seven. So when I five quarter by eight. So basically when you say five quarter that means five quarters of an inch in the rough. Yeah. And then they plane it and sand it down so it becomes a one inch thick and seven and a half inches wide. They just call it five quarter to confuse the layman so you can <laughs> sound smarter. Well, than it's like a two else. by four, it's a two by four. That's, that's my right. point. See? Trickery. Um, so this stuff is rock solid. Uh, true. It doesn't always come, true, right? It doesn't always come that way. Um, this happens to be very straight. If it yep. wasn't straight though, you've got a couple tricks for making it so. Well, yeah, I mean, if you have, if you don't have a jointer and, you know, lots of times I'll build something like this on, on site and yep. I don't want to bring my shop equipment in. 
So here's a, here's a piece of the straight grain fur, same material, not sanded and as clean as the beard stuff. Uh, but if you look, and you look down the edge, I put it up against the beard stuff, which has a nice straight edge, and you'll see what I mean. So I push that tight, push it in the middle. So I've got a, a no gap right here. That is rock solid. And let me pick this up just a little bit. And you come down there, you can see it separates and opens and a tiny bit. And it's touching down there. So watch what happens when I push this in tight. See the other end open up? Now this one just opened up here. See that? Yep. So we've got a little bit of a, what would you call it, a crown, a There's bow. a crown in there, and, and more than likely, there's a dip in here. So concave and convex, yep. all right? So to straighten that out, if you don't have a joiner, I mean, this is what I love about these tools, is I can put them together like that. All I right. can just grab my straight edge. Uh, one right here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Turn it around, spin it around. Oh, look, watch your head. Look at this. So now I just take my straight edge, and I bring it to zero on this end, and make it zero on that end down there. And what you I want, mean you zero... You want zero here is yeah, flush. Just by just taking your, holding your finger there, just yep. like that. So now... With no overhang here and a little slight overhang there. Yeah. So that's not off a lot, but you still want to make it right. It's going to so. make a difference. Here are your ears. Yeah. Oh. Uh, for you, you're welcome. Thank you, Sonny. Oh, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But now all I want to do, we're going to set the saw the right depth, and we're going to run it along, and it's just going to kiss this off just a little bit. That's tight good. down here. That's tight here, all Look the way. That. So I know a lot of people who have got a home workshop and do not have a jointer. Track saw, same effect. You know, it was actually faster to do with the track saw than a jointer. That's a good point. All right, so we're not actually going to use this. Let me nope. get this out it's of It's just way. how to straighten up the edge. So we've got to start building this thing. Uh, where do you want to start? What pieces? So we'll uh, basically cut our cross pieces. So we've got one, two, three, four rails. Yep. Overall width of the door is 42. Correct. What's the width of your styles? Well, they're five and a half inches. So 42, we've got to take off two times five and a half, 11. So 11. now we're down to 31. Okay, so now if we cut it 31 inches, it's going to be too short. Too short because? Because of the half lap joint. Oh, so if right. you look at that half lap joint. So 31 it, would be in between here. Correct. You have to allow for an inch on this side and an inch on the other side, which makes this longer than the dimension in between. So 31 plus those two inches, 33. Can we cut four of them, 33? We can cut four of them, 33. All right, so I have already cut three of the rails, and this is the last piece that I have to cut. And what I like to do is lay it on the saw, square up one end first. Now I've set my stop down here for the length that I need so all of my pieces will be exactly right. Make my last cut. my rails are cut and we're ready to start doing our rabbits. So the rabbit that we're talking about is if this is our rail right here, you've got extra length here and then down on the style. Your screen's going to sit into this? The screen's going to sit in that and it's well I'm going to reason reason I'm cutting it on the table saw is because I want to save that wasted piece and I'll show you. So we'll cut this piece first. <laughs> Got a little bit of a cut there. Right. And so then now we're gonna I knock that off. Take that piece out. So I'm gonna slide my fence over. Like 
drop the height of my blade down. So we've got our rabbet to receive the screen. Right, and then this piece here we're saving because that's going to hide the edge of our screen and the staples to hold the screen in. And check that out, Tommy. Because of the saw blade kerf, yep. you're going to end up with a tiny little reveal, tiny little reveal on your little screen molding. So screen right. goes there, this will hold it in place, and you've got that beautiful reveal. Right, so we can do one of two things. We can keep this back and have a step here, or we can pull it out flush and get a nice shadow line right there. All right, I tell you, Tommy, you've always got tricks up your <laughs> sleeve, don't you? All right, so the next piece that we have to cut is the half lap that's going to sit on top of the uh, style. And to do that, because I have to stand the piece up, I've made a little jig to put my piece in. You're not comfortable running it through up like this, no. especially not on a long piece. Exactly, so I want to make sure. So it, let me just I, check out your jig here. So this one actually goes over the fence and yep. work. Yep. I just took a bunch of scrap pieces, yeah. glued them together, dropped it on so that will slide. Oh, clever. And I'll just make my uh, so adjustments. Yeah, 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 look yeah, at that. Let me get it in here first so I can get my adjustment. Nice snug fit on yep. that side. Drop it down. Adjust my blade so it's flush on this side. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make the cut. That should be it. Okay. So you made that nice, beautiful little slice right through there, and then that piece is coming off? Right. I didn't make that cut. I gotta set the saw down again. Move it over, move it over, back an inch. Would so. you ever consider doing all of these half laps with a router, or do you think it's easier with the table saw? Well, first of all, when you cut all these pieces, you make one thing set, and then you make all your multiple passes. Yeah. Then you do all your multiple passes with this, and then you reset it, and you do this, what I'm doing right here. Effectively, set it, eight cuts, reset, eight more cuts. Yeah. So it's yeah. going to go a lot faster. A lot faster and a lot simpler. So because I'm going to use my cross cut guide, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it's going to sit in the saw square. So loosen it, bang it upside down, make sure my space is tight, tight in the dado. Flip it over, drop it in. Now that's going to be square to the blade. Nice. So now I don't want to cut this with this tight against the rip fence like that. So I'm going to move this out. I'm going to take a scrap piece of wood. So I'll put my spacer here. Bring my wood over to bring this over to where I want to make my cut. Put the clamp on that. Okay. Nice. Now that's my stop. And that's our half lap joint. All right. In there. All right. And a one inch there. That's nice. Right. Okay, so now we can lay all our pieces out on the table so we can locate them and then cut all of our mortises. Okay, so let's lay out all these pieces so we can see what we have. I've already pre-marked everything so we know exactly the location. Let's see, that's going to be turned around. Uh, yeah, this one goes on this side. All right, so we'll just put these in here. Now you'll see what we have. It's all laid out. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's our intermittent one there. So we've got some hash marks. Right. For where you're going to put your tenons. Yeah, I've got another one up the top here. It's going to go 
uh, slide it right down there just a little bit. Slide the whole door down. There you go. There you go. One more? Yep. Good. And then you got the oversized one, the which is obviously the here. end. It's our toe kick. So bottom of the screen, here's your extra support that you're talking about for right. those little kiddos to push. Big, right. oversized, and a little long top and bottom so you can trim Little it. long top and bottom. I like to keep them a little bit long. That was my father gave me that trick a long time ago. So whenever we're making a door or something, make it a little longer in case you drop it on the floor and it doesn't damage it. Your dad, so that must have been like a real long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you notice uh, one thing here, we have a rabbit on this side and a rabbit on this side, this side, and this side, but these intermittent pieces have rabbits on both sides. Right, so screen, 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 screen and each yeah. one's going to get a little piece of molding to hold it in place. That's right. Okay, so I'm ready to cut the mortises. Let's get all these out of the way. <clears throat> Spin them around. Got that? Yep. Here's a clamp for you. Good. So now I'm just going to take my cutter, put it on my marks, and make a cut. To do that, to compensate for the overlap here, I'm going to change the setting of my depth and making the, the blade go out, I want it to go even deeper. So an extra so, inch, basically. Yeah, so that goes out now. Really. Nice. Good. So the uh, machine is awesome, but it's obviously the extra set of hands that makes all the difference. Yeah, that makes right? all the difference in the world. That's Speeds what you were going to say. And right I up, point, yeah. yeah, I want to give you all the credit. <laughs> that is amazing, right? I mean, look at these things. That's it's fast and simple, right? That's yeah. awesome. Uh, are we ready for glue up? We are ready for glue up. All right, so we're ready to start putting the tenons in. I'm going to set those in glue. How much you put in there, Tommy? I never know how much to put in. Well, there. I put in a good amount. It's gonna these these slots. I made the wider slot so I can adjust it if I need to. So if it comes out, oozes out, no problem. Yeah, it's gonna ooze out a little. So a lot of people don't know that the glue being wet will actually swell the tenant in there and make it fit really tight over time. Okay, so make sure you got them going the right way. And then we'll put a little glue in here. Boy, I'm self-conscious that I'm not going the right way. Which way is your arrow pointed? Down right or up? Right here. See? I got the arrow's going up. It's going up? Yeah. Awesome. And 
Let me say you got A and B right there. Cover this pretty good with glue. Slide the first one right in. Oh, that's so satisfying. Fits nice. It does fit nice. A little fine tuning. Oop, wait till we get it to. Gotcha, I gotcha. Don't you worry, I gotcha. Yeah, just hold on to that. I don't want it to fall over and knock you in the head. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's not a bad idea. It'll help. You do care, huh? Yeah, very little. You want to put a bead on this edge? Uh, I got to put it in the mortises. No, I know, but you, are we going to bead it on this? Are we going to put the glue on this bead? On no, this edge, or? I think I'd rather put it on the other one. Come up a second. Up a touch. So now we're gonna line them up from the, the marks here. So we're gonna tap, tap this down to the marks. Good. Turn this over. It's still good here. You good on your marks? Uh, Sit there. Right, let's get this one. I'll get one more clamp right Hang there. on, let me come to you wanted to line up to that or you want to line up to this? Well it it, it should line up to either let's check the measure. Top is right. We on our marks. I'm still on mine. Okay, let's just check our diagonal real quick. So, I want you to, you want to be in there? Put it on number one, on the tape measure. Oh, but same spot, right? Yep. I'm at, oops. You gotta, 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 get, you gotta make sure you're on there. I'm right there. Okay. And I'm right there. Okay, so that's gotta go down. That's what I've got. I've got. I got to loosen the clamp. You got it. All right. Let's give that about 20 minutes, and then we'll take the clamps off and sand the door. Okay. So now we're waiting for the glue to dry. I'm going to start cutting these pieces right here that are going to hide the end of the screen. So we're going to have to miter each end. But rather than make two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve cuts, I'm going to take all of the pieces, I'm going to put them together, make them nice and tight, and take them over to the saw. I'm going to miter all of those at once, then bring them back and mark the lengths. Something your dad taught you? <laughs> yeah. A little trick I learned in the service.
I wasn't in the service though. All right, so why don't you start sanding while I do the cutting. pieces of wood together and you have a joint that has a very hairline crack in it like that a small joint you can fill that joint with some glue force it in with your finger and wipe off the excess now you're going to take the sander that you have disconnect the hose because you don't want suction you're going to hold your finger over the hole while the sand is on, and that will force the dust down into the glue. And there you go, an invisible joint. You're a magician, Tommy. Got one Short right little in. angry one, but... Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's say we wanted to break this sharp edge just a little bit. Break it, I mean put a little bevel on it, a chamfer on it, or roll it over. You can take a piece of sandpaper, a lot of people will take a piece of sandpaper, and they'll go like this, and they'll sand it like that. Well, the wood could splinter and go up here, and you'd get a splinter in your hand. You could wrap it around your hand like that, less chance of it happening. Or if you have a flat block like this, and you sand it, the edge or the grain could still get wrapped under it and you could ruin the wood. So you want to have a sanding block like this where the paper wraps around the edge and you sand it this way. Now there's no chance of that coming up, splintering, and you getting hurt and you're nice, you have a nice chamfered edge. Yes. All right, so we don't know whether or not the homeowner is gonna stain or paint the door after we install it. But for now, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of a wood preservative on it to protect it. And once it's dry, you're going to put a real light coat. Once it's dry, you can do whatever you want with it. And it's really nothing but a borate-based mineral. And that's the wood preservative. And you notice I didn't put much on at all. It just requires a very thin coat. Okay, that's all we need. Now we're ready to put the screen in. Now the first thing we need to do is get the screen in, is put the door under tension. Tension because? Well, I actually want to make the door, think of it like a bow and arrow. How the bow has a curve and the arrow, the line is straight. So that's what we want to do with the door. We want, want to make a bow out of it, so we're going to bend it down. I have a clamp on that side, another clamp on this side. We're going to push down on the door, making it a bow. 
Push down as hard as you can. Okay, that should be good. All right, let's get the screening wire. We'll start right up the top and then we're gonna roll it down that way. Any particular screen you're using? This is a fiberglass screen and wire, and you can get it fiberglass, you can get bronze, aluminum, all kinds of different materials. All right, so we just want to roughly eyeball it in the center there. That's good. All right, so now I'm just going to use some half-inch staples and run it right into that rabbit. Try to keep it as straight as I can. So just look at the little squares of the screen. Just yeah, eyeball yeah, it a little yeah. in. Okay, now we're going to stretch it tight down the other end. We'll do that other end. Okay, now we'll just pull it nice and taut. Tight as you can pull it without, yeah, roll it up. Maybe you can grab it better. Nice and tight. There you go. I'm going to start in the middle? Yeah, I'll start in the middle and work my way out. I think it looks pretty straight, pretty even coming down. Okay, you ready? Okay, that's nice, nice and taut. Love that. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna staple across here. I wanna put some tension on it, but not too much. And you're gonna keep tension on your side. You ready? Yep. Put a little bit of tension on it. Staple it. It's pretty good. All right, now we're ready to install all the filler strip that came out of the rabbit. So we're gonna lay them down, roughly where they go, and then we'll fit them in with each miter. Okay, so now we'll take the long one, lay it out roughly where it's gonna go. Okay, so now, <clears throat> you want to line it up so we have a little bit of a gap on each side here. Just like that, not much, just like that. Okay? How's that look down there? Need me to give it to you a little bit? I do, I'd like you to come to me. That's uh, sit that? there. Right there? Yep. All right, I'm just going to tack the corner. Headless nails. Headless nails. I love these things. You can't see them. All right. That looks pretty good there. You got a little gap on that? I've got a little gap. Okay. I'll just tack the corner. Now I'll just try to make this gap even all the way down. Here you go, Pops. Look at you.
I don't want to go crazy with these in case you ever want to change the screen. I want to take them out. Good. Okay, beautiful. Make sure we get a gap up there in that corner. Let me get across there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Ready? Stand this thing up. Yep, stand it up. Take a look. There we go. It's a big screen door. It is a huge oh, screen door. But it is also a very good looking screen door. Good. Strong and it'll stay straight and true for a long time. Nice job, Tommy. Thanks for the help. All right, well, we appreciate you all tuning in to another Pro to Pro. We'll be doing more of these, so keep an eye out for them. We'd like to thank our friends at Baird for supplying some nice materials, and of course, our good friends at FESS for sponsoring us today. So long, folks. Ready? Yep. So long, folks. Oh.